Hello, and welcome to all of our gods, goddesses, and champions. Thank you so much for coming to the High res Expo at DreamHack Atlanta. Stop. Are we really doing the same shit as last year? 2020 is going to be a huge year for High res Studios. We really need to wow people with this year's High res Presents keynote. I have an idea. 2020 is going to be a huge year for High res We need to wow people with this year's High res Presents keynote. I literally just said that. I got it. Imagine this. We totally need an epic voiceover guy detailing the game announcements that will be premiering during High res Expo. I don't really like having epic and game that close in proximity in our keynote. Shut up, Isaiah. You shut up. These press conferences usually do a quick run through of the announcements that will be made during the presentation. It's like when the movies do a teaser before the full trailer comes out. I hate that. Don't we do God teasers? F what if... We start off with our dev teams and talk about our newest title from Hi Res Studios, our tactical action shooter called Rogue Company. Then we'll go through the reveals and updates planned for Paladins in 2020. Then we'll talk about what's coming up for Realm Royale. What's with that chicken? Mm, Realm's gotten weird on Twitter lately. Finally, we'll wrap up with a look at the new gods, announcements, and updates coming up for Smite in 2020. And then we'll wait for overwhelming but obligatory applause from the audience. Hold up, we definitely need to mention. This year, we've implemented crossplay for Smite, Paladins, and Realm Royale on PC, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and most recently, PlayStation 4. And we're still fully committed to our charity efforts, raising around half a million dollars this year with the help of our generous players and doing something each month with our volunteer employee group, Hi Res Helps. To cap off 2019, we have a brand new charity event benefiting the Georgia Make-A-Wish Foundation called Winter Wishes, which will be live on December 12th. So basically, our Spring Fling charity event, but in winter? We were going to call it the Blizzard Bash, but uh, legal didn't want us using the B word. Bash. This is good, but when do we get to the real announcements? Right now. But before that, we need to have a celebrity cameo. Wait, we get Keanu? Are you saying we're getting Keanu? We got Keanu! Sure. What's going on, everybody? This is Caleb from Beartooth. This is Ashi from Beartooth. And we are very excited because now, if you go on Smite Store, you can get the Beartooth music pack. You can rank it up real loud, jam some rock and roll with your buddies. It's a great time. We're going to love it. <laughs> Missions call for a team that exercises diplomacy or keeping a cool head. A light touch or restraint. You should call a different team. Because that is not what we do. It's the opposite, in fact. You guys ready? For those of you watching live at High Res Expo. Strap in, suit up, and get ready to roll out. It's time for Rogue Company. You might be wondering why we're all suited up for an action movie montage. That's just what cool guys do. Don't leave that in. And now we're all geared up and ready to show you an exclusive look inside the development of Rogue Company. In case you missed our Nintendo Direct reveal back in September, Rogue Company is the new tactical action shooter from First Watch Games as well as Hi-Res Studios. Undertake high stakes missions playing as elite mercenaries in a variety of objective based game modes that will challenge your team's tactical and strategic abilities. But for now, let's take a look at the development of Rogue Company. 
our team had one mission, create a free-to-play multiplayer shooter. Rogue Company blends the exciting nature of an action shooter with tactical decision-making. Rogue Company is all about objective-based gameplay with ongoing content that's delivered on a regular basis and a game experience that is the same across all platforms. First Watch Studios is a band of developers from High Res Studios and Industry Vets. High Res Studios has spent over a decade perfecting games as a service and competitive esports. For the development team, uh, a core shooter is one that focuses on the gunplay experience. It means that although there are abilities and lots of different ways to augment the gameplay, at the end of the day, your skill with shooting the weapons, with knowing the right weapons to use in the right situation, is still the dominant factor in whether you win an encounter or lose. What Ganyi brings to the table is he's not just a phenomenal designer. In fact, he's a world champion Halo player. But the tactical elements of Rogue Company start with the fact that it's round-based, one life. So every decision you make is meaningful. The action elements come from everything else. Whether it's shooting a grenade launcher, throwing a melee weapon, all of these elements create thrilling moments. Objective-based gameplay was a core pillar for Rogue Company because what we really wanted to emphasize was strategy, teamwork, and at the end of the day, meaningful decisions. The meta supports a bunch of different play styles, and it really comes down to what's the best fit for your team. We wanted to say all metas can work, and the decision is on the player. With Rogue Company, we're taking on the challenge of creating our own IP and our own property. And one of the things when we started the project that we wanted to make sure we did was find really strong world-class talent. The world of Rogue Company is set roughly nine years in the future. We have a motley crew of very fiercely individualistic people from all walks of life. It is its own entity separate from any government, but many governmental organizations do turn to it for help. When Rogue Company takes on that contract, Rogue Company has vetted it and approved it as fulfilling the main goal of the group, which is to right the world's greatest wrongs. Evelyn brings over 15 years of experience in narrative design and in building worlds, and we're very excited about having her to help build the Rogue Company universe. The direction for our map creation process is that we want to really have a competitive game, so we want to keep our environments nice and clean. A lot of the maps that we've created are areas that the Rogue Company has just entered into. High Castle is this estate slash villa that's on the side of a mountain cliff in Italy, and it's got all these beautiful trees and beautiful rocks. It's a really interesting environment they probably haven't seen in other games. Panama Canals was a map that we worked on for a few months. We wanted to make sure that we put a spin on your typical canal. And so the idea is that there's this war cruiser and this cargo ship that's exploded. And so players land into this scenery and have to fight the enemy combatants. Skyfell is an awesome, awesome map. Basically, it's a skyscraper in Dubai. It's brand new, it's super modern, super chic. It's where all the elite go to shop and party and there's a nice, beautiful gallery. So the art direction of Road Company is something that's not your typical military shooter. It finds itself really embedded in realism, but at the same time, there's a sense of flair to things. Dima is my favorite character. We came up with an idea where he was this guy that was boisterous, over the top, um, and would pretty much go to any lengths to get the job done for himself. Rogue Company has all of the usual suspects of weapons and equipment, sniper rifles, shotguns, pistols, but in addition to that, our eclectic band of mercenaries allows us to make some weapons that are a bit more non-traditional. After years of making Rogue Company, we are so excited to share our labor of love with the gaming community. Rogue Company is coming to all platforms in 2020. You might be wondering when you can get your hands on Rogue Company. Well, we've got news for you. Rogue Company's alpha keys are going out today. Sign up at www.roguecompany.com and get your key on lock. If you've already signed up for a key at roguecompany.com, check your inbox and suit up. And for those of you at HRX 2019, you can play the game on the show floor. What are you doing? The hunt is on, dearest of Dales. 
You've realized that the hunt is an in-game quality initiative. You think this is a game? Move! Uh, anyway, since joining the Evil Mojo team earlier this year as executive producer of Paladins, the team has been 100% focused on quality. Through the hunt, we've made a sweeping set of process improvements, polished rough edges, and even fixed some incredibly long-standing issues, including Terminus. We're not done yet, and we're going to keep the hunt going through 2020 as we make Paladins better and better. Not only that, we also held the first election of our Assembly of Champions, a community chosen council of players that brings the community's concerns directly to Evil Mojo. The AOC advocated for AI improvements, shooting range quality of life updates, various balance and bug fixes, and the overall improvement of Paladins. They've really become friends of Evil Mojo. We're happy to announce that we'll be continuing the program into 2020. Applications will be live Wednesday, November 20th. Watch our social channels for complete details on how you can apply. We're back to 2019. This year also saw the rollout of full crossplay in Paladins across PC, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and finally, PlayStation 4. Oh, sorry, that's me. Hello? On top of crossplay on all platforms, we've released four new champions over the past 12 months. Our newest champion, Rom, was just released recently, so you can play as a freaking demon with a minigun for free on all platforms today. Do it now. I'll wait. This year also saw the release of Amani, Atlas, and Io. We took extra development time to polish these champions, resulting in some of our best champions yet. Did someone say Io? Wow, Kevin Meyer, lead designer of Io? Oh, please. Kevin Meyer was my father's name. Call me Kevin Meyer. We've talked a lot about our new champions the last year in Paladins. Hey, Kevin, you want to talk about the new champion? And eh, no. I want to show him. I was looking for this. I will have your soul. Come and get it. Son of a... Ridiculous! I like you. Ooh, that's going to leave a mark. Introducing Tiberius, the weapons master. This eccentric new damage champion utilizes chakrams and a massive heavy blade to showcase his superiority in battle. Whether bouncing his glaives off floors and walls or recalling a sword lodged in a wall back to his hand, you can be sure that everything Tiberius is doing is in style. Through our exhaustive research of in-game metrics, ancient tombs, and deviant art, we've realized that people love animals with human-like features. Man, I really wish there was a better word for that. We've gone through painstaking details in designing his kit and making sure his tiger-like movements translate to fun and fluid gameplay. With his versatile moveset and varied weapon kit, we know you'll agree. Tiberius is the cat's meow. We've got so many exciting things to introduce in 2020 for Paladins. Let's run through some of the highlights. Alongside Tiberius' release, we're celebrating our community with the release of a brand new battle pass, the Community Battle Pass. This battle pass includes Dark Monarch Leon, Monkey King Talus, Soul Briar Grover, and Squadron Ash, each concepted by you, our community members. This is the first of six battle passes that we'll be releasing in 2020, so we're just getting started. Are we Lilu Dallas? Because we got multi-pass. Speaking of community and skins, we've got something very special coming for you. The long-awaited Sweat Shop Eevee skin. Oh, Sweet Shop Eevee skin. Wow, that was almost really bad. We talked about Tiberius earlier. He's gonna be the first of four all new champions in 2020. The four champions in 2020 will represent each class of the game. So we'll see a new frontline, damage, support, and flank of the year, or pss for short. There's gotta be a better way to say that. 
Somebody once said that 2019 was the best year ever for Paladins. That was me. Well, they lied. Rude. Because 2020 is going to be even better. We can't thank you, the community, enough. And from the entire Evil Mojo team, thank you for always playing our favorite game. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for allowing the Evil Mojo team and the world of Paladins into your gaming lives. And Amanda's right, the best is yet to come. And now it's time for a message from our friends at Heroic Leap to tell you what's coming in the future for Realm Royale. Bach. Bach, Bach. Hello everyone. Bach. I'll be your guide for today's Realm Bach. Royale update. My name is Chicken Man. Bach. 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 You may recognize me from our chicken combat Bach. videos from Bach. earlier this year. Bach. 2019 has been an egg-citing year. We released Realm Royale on Nintendo Switch, along with full crossplay across Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. It's an amazing thing to see. You could say it's poultry in motion. Haha. <laughs> We've also added new weapons like the minigun, as well as revamped the gun town and lost forge areas of our game. In addition, new mechanics have been introduced, including catapults, chicken combat, and a third ability slot, in addition to three new battle passes with new skins, mounts, and nests. I mean quests. Haha. <laughs> But now, we are excited to introduce the newest addition to Realm Royale. Coming in early 2020, we are pleased to announce all new limited timed events. With this feature, we'll be regularly rolling out all new game modes for you to enjoy. This new feature will ensure that there's always something new to see in Realm Royale. And the best part is, this new feature will be absolutely free for all players when it hatches in early 2020. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let's cross the road over to Titan Forge and see what's coming up for Smite. Wow, this is awesome. Irish Presents is going really great so far. Yeah, Paladins has a lot of cool stuff coming in 2020. Realm Royale's looking great. And did you hear about Rogue Company? Securing objectives, taking down bad guys. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty interesting. Yeah. But none of that has anything to do with Smite. So I think it's about time I start talking uninterrupted about Smite's plans for... <laughs> Greetings, Titan Forge. It appears there might be a smite delay in your regularly scheduled broadcasting. I feel like we could have overpowered them at some point. Eh, it would have been a whole thing. Titan Forge! It seems we've had a busy year, haven't we? You released eight new gods in 2019, including the first simultaneous god release with Horus and Sit. You released the new Yoruba pantheons with the god releases of Oleron and Yamoja. And just this week, you released the Ruby Battle Pass in collaboration with Rooster Teeth, featuring Ruby Rose Thanatos, Blake Baladona Amaterasu, Wise Shni Freya, and Yang Xiao Long Terra. Available now on all platforms. And let's not forget the Olympians. The Smart Player Council has affected changes to game balance, suggested quality of life fixes, and made reducing player toxicity a huge priority. And of course, Smite Blitz, the all new mobile game set in the Smite universe. Available worldwide on iOS and Android. Did I miss anything? No. And that was a nice use of B-roll there while you were talking. Which brings us why we're here today. The North Pantheon has gone untouched for way too long. We will not sit idly by while you create a diverse cast of gods. This is why we are here. All future gods must be Norse. But we just did Jormungandr this March. It was this year, wasn't it? Well, 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 Titan Forge. It seems we've had a busy year, haven't we? Vikings have taken over the whole studio. It's time to try hard and go die hard. Now you understand our demand, Mr. AJ. All gods must be Norse or your life has run its course. Wait! Hostage negotiations are a part of the scenario, right? Usually the hostages aren't the ones doing the negotiation. But I appreciate your enthusiasm. What if I told you that our next god was not only a Norse god, but a Viking too? Roll the trip.
<laughs> Heimdall, do you really think you can stop me? That's why I'm here. Very impressive. But what about Heimdall's ability? Heimdall, a unique Norse hunter who throws his axe with a unique basic attack chain. He brings his legendary sword, his horn, and the Bifrost to break the mold for hunters. You've been very cooperative. It would seem that Heim is not the only doll here. <laughs> What of the future gods, Titan Forge? What about your plans for 2020? I really shouldn't. We have ways of making you talk, Miss Ray You monsters! Oh, finally. Okay, okay, you win. Just let her go. I'll show you all the new gods for 2020 with the brand new trailer. Enjoy. You've come seeking a vision. The threads of fate hold the answers for those worthy. One thread, a defender of Asgard, with eyes on the horizon over the Bifrost, Heimdall. Another strand to the east, a land of warriors as plentiful as trees, with one rising above all. Deeper still, into the woods, there resides a home, a home that is a sanctuary for none. But Baba Yaga, Darker still, the infinite abyss rushes like waves, and yet more comforting than what lies beneath. However, even the darkest night gives way to the light of the moon. But that's a tale for another time. The threads of fate bind us all. What will they hold for you? That's it? I'm sorry. Is six new gods not good enough for you? We demand the Norse gods, not Baby Yoda. Baba Yaga. Or whatever that ball with ears is. Oh, that We need more, AJ. Well, we are working on some major design changes for season seven. I'm listening. We're working on a new Joust map, and the art team is really going all in on it. Our goal is to bridge the gap between current and classic Joust, bringing the best elements of both into one brand new version of Joust. We're also working on a brand new Chinese event. This event will celebrate the new Chinese god, as well as the redesigned Joust map. It will include a fantastic story, plenty of free quests, and some great skins. We're also working on brand new god reworks, including two of your most requested gods. Odin is going to have at least two abilities completely overhauled to bring in more aspects of his runic magic and his mythical spear. Bastet will also be seeing big changes to her abilities to let her use her summonable cats in more interesting ways. Conquest will be going through multiple balance changes. New XP camps will be added near duo lane, the geometry of mid harpies will be heavily changed, and a new jungle connected objective will be added by the speed buff. But what of balance? Well, of course we're doing exhaustive god balance and item changes, which I can go into full detail on right now. And that will result in balanced beats. Wow, you guys really have a great plan for Smite. I feel like we should apologize. This has all been one big misunderstanding. Cut them loose. That was easier than expected. Hey, sorry about the whole kidnapping thing. Hey, us too. And you know, I've learned something today. Even though we've had our differences on the direction you're taking the game, you've really shown us that Smite's best years are ahead of it. Maybe we should trust the Titan Forge team to- Leaving so soon, dirtbags. Isaiah? Yippee Viking, motherfucker. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to our High Risk Presents 2019 keynote. The work we've put into Smite and all of our games is not only because we love our games, but we love you too. Stay tuned for more info about our Season 7 update in the coming weeks. 
The gods and updates we have planned for 2020 are some of our best yet, and we can't wait to get them in your hands. From all of us here at hi -Rez Studios, thanks for watching. We hope you have a great hi -Rez Expo. So do you think we should clean this debris up and the Viking bits and stuff?